11 Mack trucks, each with a 28-liter V12 Cummins diesel engine under the hood, hauling over 3 million pounds of cement and steel into the freezing Arctic Circle, 1500 miles away from civilization. Sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? But during the bleak 1950s, when North America was under the threat of a nuclear showdown with the Soviet Union, the West solution was the so-called Distant Early Warning Line, or Dew Line, which consisted of 63 manned radar stations about 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. And, well, construction material had to be hauled into the freezing terrain somehow. So stick around until the end of this video to find out the story of the amazing 1956 Bulldog convoy in the Arctic, which involved 11 Mack trucks filled to the brim, a couple of bulldozers and a team of unbreakable men. It's the 1950s and America isn't exactly seeing eye to eye with the Soviet Union. It was so bad in fact that the West was fearing an atomic war was about to begin, especially after realizing that Russian nuclear bombers could just fly over the Arctic Circle to deploy their devastating weapons on US soil. So in 1954 the American and Canadian governments drew up the plan to build the so-called Distant Early Warning Line or Dew Line. An an array of 63 manned radar stations scattered across the Arctic Circle which would be able to detect incoming aircraft and warn the West's armies. But the Arctic isn't exactly a friendly place to be, let alone build something of this magnitude. So it became clear from the get-go that it would be a near impossible task just to haul the necessary supplies up to the dew line. It was evident that your run-of-the-mill truck just wouldn't do. One of the utterly impressive machines used to transport cargo into the inhospitable Arctic was the letter no VC-22 snow freighter, a 274 feet long, 24-wheel drive behemoth that hold 500 tons of equipment to the dew line. But this is a vehicle that deserves its own story. And if you're interested in the fascinating history of the huge American overland trains of the 50s and 60s, I have a separate video which you can watch by clicking here. Okay, so the Letourneau no snow freighter was deployed in 1955 and worked well for a season, but the massive job of building the dew line was far from over. Enter the giant Mack trucks that hold no less than three and a half million pounds of cement, steel and supplies to the frozen Arctic. The so-called Bulldog convoy was made up from 11 LRVSW trucks which were powered by 28-liter Cummins V12 diesel diesel engines that made 600 horsepower and 1600 pound-feet of torque. The rigs were ordered in November of 1955 and just two months later they were shipped by rail from the Bulldogs manufacturing plant in Allentown, Pennsylvania to the Alaska Freight Lines base in Seattle where they were serviced and winterized. The same Alaska Freight Lines company operated the Letourneau no VC-22 a year earlier and this time around it had a completely different monster on its hands. While the VC-22 was basically a 24-wheel drive trackless train, the Max had to make do with just 6x4 traction, but they had an ace up their sleeve. You see, the transmission was a Mac 2-lever manual shift duplex gearbox with 8 forward speeds and 2 reverse. Power was then sent to a Mac Planidrive dual reduction axle bogey with interaxle and differential power dividers. This was a pretty cool piece of technology back then and it really did its job in the rough freezing terrain. Behind each tractor was a 65 feet long trailer that carried 330,000 pounds of cargo or 165 tons and had built-in tanks that could store 5,600 gallons of diesel fuel. You know, because gas stations aren't exactly commonplace in the Arctic. With their 5 foot tall tires, the 11 trucks slowly made their way across the 1500 mile journey through the freezing cold, where temperatures often reached minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit 
and winds of up to 50 miles per hour were as common as the American driveway. At the front of the convoy were a couple of bulldozers that slowly but surely made a path through the ice and snow for the trucks. And after watching the 65-year-old promotional video a couple of times, I can only wonder what the operators of these open cab machines had to go through during this treacherous journey. It was an excruciating job, I'm sure. The men drove in 12-hour shifts and the trucks ran 24-7, with their engines only being shut off for quick servicing, as the starting procedure took several hours and involved heating the engine and transmission with fire. Water froze almost immediately if it was taken outside and everything had to be done the hard way with the team being forced to unload multiple trailers several times in order to get them unstuck, only to have them reloaded for the journey to continue. But it wasn't all bad. On sunny days with good weather, small airplanes would land near the convoy and bring in mail for the crew, as well as fresh fruit and vegetables. The planes were also used to survey the land from above, charting a course for the people on the ground. As for socializing, there was the occasional encounter with the local Eskimos who were bewildered by the sheer size of the convoy and its ability to confront a terrain that's usually traversed with sled dogs. The expedition was a success, although it's unclear how much time it took for the team to transport everything. In the end, it seems that two of the trucks were sold to a coal mine in Alaska, but as for the remaining nine rigs, nobody really knows what happened to them. I like to think they made their way back south to warmer working conditions, but the fact of the matter is the cost of running such a convoy was simply immense, and there's a good chance that the semis met their end in the Arctic. It was a major undertaking and an impressive achievement which ultimately led to the construction of the Dew Line, with its nuclear bomber detecting radars. Thankfully, the atomic apocalypse never came, but this story demonstrates yet again the sheer willpower and ingenuity people are able to show when it's time to roll up their sleeves. And for me, a kid of the 90s, it's just something that might never happen again. But what do you think? Could mankind pull a stunt like this in this day and age? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.